Matt Stoner from Static Sound Studios and Sound Between the Static. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about miking acoustic guitars. You guys remember from the last video, the introduction, kind of just a little bit of the studio equipment you're going to need to record stuff in your home. Um, you remember we talked about the two mics that I use, which are dynamic mics and condenser mics. Um, the dynamic mics are um, they're more passive, so they don't need to be powered by... Um, 48 volt fan power, whereas the condensers are kind of active, so they actually require power. Um, and some dynamic or condenser mics actually have battery things, so you don't even need fan power. Um, today I'm going to show you guys how to mic some stuff with a large diaphragm. Uh, you can use both of these methods, or all these methods on both mics, the small and large diaphragm. I'm just showing you because it's bigger and easier to see. Um, so yeah, and I use this one more for acoustic stuff anyways. But, and um, I might show you guys another video of having double mic stuff, which I use both for. Um, but for this case, I'm just going to do single mics because it's a little bit simpler and it'll get you on your feet at least. Um, so, a couple different techniques you want to use. And you might want to use all of them on different tracks because you want your acoustic guitars to sound really thick and full. Um, especially for just acoustic songs because it's the only instrument. So you want it to be thick and very present. So um, you might want to try a bunch of these, um, or maybe just two or three or something, whatever. Do whatever you want. Um, the first technique that I use, um, and it's uh, my first choice, um, is you put the condenser mic, you point the diaphragm, which is the part of the mic that picks up sound. You guys should know this. Um, you point it at the fretboard between this, uh, the 12th fret and like I don't know, the, the 17th fret or the sound hole, depending on how big you want it to sound. Um, and you have it about, you know, like, you know, about that far away. So like six inches away from, from that part, just so that if you move around a little bit, it doesn't change the, the sound that the microphone's picking up too dramatically. And you don't have a chance of hitting it unless you're a crazy acoustic guitar player. And that'd just be weird. Um, and that gives it a really thick, chunky sound. Um, and if you point it a lot, like if you have it like this, and you kind of turn it in a little bit to where it's not pointing at the sound hole, but it's kind of like angled that direction, um, it kind of gives it a little thicker and boomier of a sound. So you can try um, either way. Um, I stay away from pointing the diaphragm directly at the sound hole from anywhere between like two feet. If it's any closer than two feet, I won't point it at the sound hole, like right in front of it, because it just pushes, that's where a lot of air comes out, and it just, it's really boomy, and you can't really do anything, so if you don't like it, um, well, after you record it, you can't really edit it to make it sound any different, so I like to stay away from that, but sometimes I will put it, like, two feet away from the sound hole, because it gives it kind of a roomy sound, um, a, a really, really dry roomy sound, um, so that's another way you can do it. Um, if you want um, kind of a thicker roomy sound, if you put it right about here, like right between the um, your little whatever that thing is called, the little plastic thing that holds the strings, and the third fret, if you put it there like, I don't know, eight inches away from the fretboard, and point the microphone towards the sound hole. So you're at like this kind of an angle going towards the sound hole, and this kind of an angle from your fretboard. Um, that gives it a really cool roomy sound, but it's a really thick roomy sound. So it's just like this sound, but a little bit, a little bit uh, roomier. Um, and that's one I use for like the backup, the background guitars a lot. So there's three. Um, another way is to mic it from here, um, kind of like right between here and here. Um, and you could probably do that from about six inches, seven inches away, uh, so you don't hit it again. Um, and that gives it like a really twangy, folksy sound. Um, and I kind of use that more for background stuff as well. And again, if you turn it in, and even if you bring it like a little bit closer, like right around there, it's like about an inch or two away from the bridge, pointing towards the strings. Um, that gives it a little thicker of a sound, um, but still it gives it that like twangy, folksy. It gives it a really very body sound. You really hear the, the um, sound of the body a lot um, and that's a cool sound for some backup stuff as well um, another way I do it sometimes this is actually kind of a new way um, is if you I'm trying to do this without a stand you kind of put it over like up like this and kind of angle it downwards so you can see it's kind of like angling downwards towards the sound hole but from like way up here um, that gives it a very 
natural sound, and it sounds like very, it's, it's hard to use one of those called onomatopoeias to describe what it sounds like. It just sounds really cool, okay? It, you can really get the sound, a distinct sound of the strings and the pick hitting the strings. Somehow, I don't know, but uh, that's another really cool way. This is getting really heavy. Hold the mic. Um, another way is to actually, and actually I have my boom stand here to try it out. Um, put it over your shoulders. So if you're sitting here, you bring your boom stand over and bring it. You want your mic to be mounted like as close to your head as possible without you hitting it with your headphones or anything. So like, I don't know, a few inches away from your ear. And you can do this over either shoulder. Um, they actually both give a really different sound. Um, because it actually picks up what you're hearing, kind of. So it gives it a little more natural sound. So if you know, you know, the way the guitar sounds to me right now, it's going to sound different from the way the guy holding the camera is because the way the sound is moving. So this picks up what you're hearing. So, you know, you're, you're sure that if, oh, that's the sound that I want, that's the sound you're going to get. Um, and then you can do, and what's cool is if you do one here and one here and pan them both left to right, it gives a really thick, warm sound, and it sounds really cool. So that's one also, one other way to do it. So that's what, five, six, I don't know how many, twelve, eleven? Um, just kidding. So yeah, that's that's uh, the majority of the ways I do it. And sometimes if I'm double micing, uh, we're getting into that now, I'll, I'll use one mic to do like, I don't know, here or here or something, and then I'll put one like right here like, I don't know, five inches away from the fretboard in between the 5th and 7th fret or the 5th and ninth fret. Um, if I'm doing a song that involves a lot of, you know, moving around, because it really picks up the sound of the, your fingers scraping against the strings, which which actually kind of sounds really cool if, you're, if it's a slow song. Because it just kind of like adds a little bit more into it. And that picks that up really well. Um, actually, a small diaphragm condenser would probably do a little bit better for micing your fretboard. So there's a few different ways you have it um, to mic your guitar, your acoustic guitar, with a large diaphragm condenser mic. You can use a small diaphragm, as I said. And, you know, just try out whatever works. I'm going to show you guys a demonstration of using the one I showed you here, the one I showed the room mic position I showed you here, the one I showed you here and the one over your shoulder, just to give you guys kind of a taste of what each one sounds like. I'm not going to sync up video to it because that's going to take way too long, so I'm just going to show you guys a picture and tell you guys what I did with it. And just to be fair, I'm going to do it all raw, no effects, no reverb, no nothing, so that way you can really sound what this guitar is going to sound like with that mic without any editing or anything whatsoever. So without further ado, here we go.